G'day all, I'm Mark from Southern Cross Amateur Astro and today in Astro Photography Tool User Guides we're going to be looking at using manual filter wheels and filter drawers. Now technically this isn't a requirement to set up but it does make your imaging sessions a lot easier to manage and especially in plan creation etc. Um, I started out with a manual filter wheel but I do recommend if you get the chance to grab a uh, electronic one they makes life so much easier you won't believe the difference it makes but this shouldn't be too long a video so let's get straight into it so first up we'll take a look at the whys and hows to set up a manual filters uh, whether it be a filter wheel or a filter drawer uh, for the purposes of this APT treats them both the same uh, they are technically both the same type of thing you have to manually change the filter but by setting up uh, the manual filters you can use multiple filters in an imaging plan uh, you still need to manually change them of course but you don't have to have separate plans every time you want to change a filter uh, and APT will wait for you to change the filter when needed uh, when the plan calls for it uh, you can have the filter details stored in the fits header which is very handy especially for post processing and that for sorting them out uh, you can include the filter details in the file names if that's what you do with your naming so just by looking at the file you know what filter you used with it and it works whether you're using a mono with narrow band filters or you're using a, a dual band quad band tri band filter with a one shot color or a DSLR it works with that as well and as for what's needed there's not much to it we create a phantom filter wheel for APT um, which you connect to and once you've done that APT recognizes you're using filters and will use the filter information as required and then once you've done that you just start imaging and that's all there really is to it so I'll get in now and show you exactly what to do okay so here we are in APT and getting this set up and running is just so easy uh, as you can tell I've got no filter wheel connected at the moment because there's not one connected to this system so all you need to do is go into your APT settings uh, to filter wheel and just as if you had a normal filter wheel fill in what you've got so I might have the L uh, R G and B um, you might the advantage of this if you got a uh, filter wheel, manual filter wheel or using filter drawers you might have two separate cameras you might have your narrow band camera so your mono and you might have a one shot color or a DSLR so you can put that filter in as well say it's a tri band filter just call it a tri um, I'll fill in the gains this is up to you if you do this part um, you can use autofocus aid to calculate the offsets and you can set your autofocus and uh, plate solving um, times uh, exposure times and everything if you wish but uh, as long as you've at least got the names in here APT will be able to use them properly so I'm going to go on connect auto connect so it connects my phantom wheel when I get it going um, you're using a manual and you want APT to pause so you can change the filter and that's all you need to do um, once you've done that you click OK and then you just connect the wheel and that's it it's done it's set up ready to go and just as an example uh, I've created a quick plan here so an LRGB filters and this is how it works so I'll just uh, click start okay because it's already on the L filter it won't tell you to do anything it won't ask you to change but once it's finished this image it comes up it pops this up tells you you want to change to your B filter so go change your filter come back and the moment you click OK you will start your plan again and it'll keep doing that for all the way through um, so it doesn't matter how many images you take or whatever um, but it will do it and like I said it saves having separate plans to uh, do with each filter you can just do them all in one plan then you just got to change the filter and of course now that we're going I'll go to the last image taken um, if you go to the info for the header okay you'll see now filter is G for that one I'll go to the other one filter is B so it's included in the uh, fits header now so you can makes it easier for post-processing okay and there's my R filter on the last one 
So that's done there. Uh, as you can see, it's also got the filters listed in the file names here. Uh, I haven't changed any of the file settings, so that's what comes up. <laughs> That'll do. Um, but that's the demo there done. So it's all done. And as I said, it even more works with uh, autofocus aid. So I'm going to just hit this run. Uh, oh, I've got to start focus craft. What am I doing? Calculate. Oh, okay, calculate. Uh, double check that's set to use as tab. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. I'll be used. Yes, you want to. Yes. So it'll tell me in a second change to my L filter. Okay. And now it'll just run through. And once it's finished the L filter, it'll tell you to change to your next filter. So the R and the B or whatever. And it'll do your offsets for you that way. So I'll just let this finish. And there it goes through. So that's how it works. Um, I'm not going to let it run all the way through here. You'll be here all night. So I'm just going to stop that. But as you see, it works with autofocus aid. So basically anything that uses um, a filter, it will work with. And you can make use of the filter information and everything else as well. But that's how it works. And it doesn't matter whether it's a filter wheel or a filter drawer. It'll do it the same way. So thanks for tuning in everyone, uh, I wish you all clear skies and I'll see you in a future video. Take care all.